Hello, and welcome to The Focusing Way podcast. I'm your host, David Battistella. Today on the Focusing Way podcast, our guest is Barbara Dickinson. Barbara Dickinson finished a long career at the United States Federal Reserve in 2010 and now consults on strategic organizational improvement. She has earned, among other credentials, certification as a strengths performance coach from the Gallup organization. In 2006, she learned the practice called focusing completing her certification as a focusing professional in 2009, and is now an enthusiastic learner and teacher of the many facets of focusing and the related practice, thinking at the edge. After volunteering her services to the Focusing Institute as a management consultant in 2011 and 2012, Barbara decided to share her expertise more widely as a strengths-oriented consultant interested in helping individuals and nonprofit organizations innovate, think, and work at their edge, improve emotional intelligence, and build better teams. She's especially interested in applying this interactive focusing method to help people form healthier relationships at all levels. Barbara lives in New Jersey with Holly, her Jack Russell Terrier. Yeah, and for for me and my, you know, the bulk of my training is is an inner relationship, focusing with Ann Weiser, Cornell, and Barbara McGavin. Um, I think there's actually that experience that that what you've just described that moment can enter. It's not formalized. Mm-hmm. I think in in their form, if it's something that if that shows up in a focusing. Uh, session, though I doubt they would invite a, a, a companion to give an opinion. Mm. But mm. after a long bit of story, I could easily sort of imagine a reflection like, yeah, so what what I'm sensing is that there's something there in you that feels as though, you know, and, and proceed, you know, to, to sort of, um, give your experience of it, Mm -hmm. which could then be received as right or wrong, but there is really no right or wrong. Cause if it's, Mm -hmm. you know, in many cases, the, the focuser could then say, yeah, that's it. Exactly. You know, you've just helped me sort of synthesize exactly, you know, and I've been heard in a way that that's exactly what I was, what I was getting, what I was experiencing. Or the response could be, let me check that. And it's like, no, it's not quite there. And it then gives the focuser the chance to sort of tune or tweak or refocus and and really sort of start to hone in on the on the thing that it actually is. I think the key in the exchange is the the respectful nature um, and and it is it is for the companion um, it for for a, for a guide it might be pretty okay to do, but in a focusing partnership, it might be a little, um, less expected if the, if the terms weren't set in advance. Mm -hmm. You've just brought up a couple of things. And one of them is this, to me, exquisite point about what happens in a traditional focusing partnership turn when the listener reflects with other than the focuser's exact words? Mm-hmm. 
focusers know that being heard via reflection of exactly what they said can be hugely beneficial. And then in my experience, some of my biggest breakthroughs in focusing have come when my partner, if you'll pardon the expression, got it wrong, used a different word. I'm, I'm, I'm being a little bit silly there, but because there's yeah. no right or wrong, as you said, right, but right. my partner used different words than I used. And I hear something that just brings the whole thing to a new level that I hadn't contemplated mm-hmm. could be there. Mm-hmm. In interactive focusing, of course that can happen. It can happen in any kind of focusing, but there's a really key difference. And it, it something in me was, was triggered about that because earlier just now you used the word my opinion. And when I am expressing to my focuser, I'm the listener and I'm listening to the focuser and I express this symbolic representation of what I captured as their essence, it really shouldn't have any of my experience in it, if at all possible. Now, humanly speaking, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. But the goal we strive to achieve is to capture the other person's essence, hold it inside, form a symbol, give that back without our opinions of it, without our experience blended into it, because that would be how it is for me when I hear what that person has to say. And that's not what we're going for in interactive focusing. Mm-hmm. I'm, I want to check with you. Did I make that difference clear? Yes, I think you did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm ready to go on with the rest of the interactive focusing process. Okay. Okay. So we've had the focuser tell their story and felt sense into how it is for them. They've gotten their reflection from the listener. They've come to a resting place, and then their listener has done the double empathic moment of capturing the essence and expressing it symbolically. The focuser has checked that inside, and they've even done a a second check inside. So how am I now with this whole thing? And they've brought the whole thing to a resting place, and then there are what we call relationship checks. Actually, I said that in the plural, but because there can be many relationship checks, but there's a relationship check at the end of a, an interactive focusing session. And I have to say the beauty of this piece of interactive focusing never ceases to amaze me. And Mm. I have brought this, very, very carefully, very gently, even a little bit stealthily into my non-focusing relationships. And it has caused so many good things to happen. Hmm. The relationship check is, okay, how am I with myself now compared to how I was with myself when I began this session? And this, by the way, I should have mentioned, is done after both people have had their turns. Mm -hmm. So we have focuser number one has their turn. The end of a turn is a double empathic moment. Focuser two has their turn. The end of their turn is a double empathic moment. And then there's the relationship check. So in the relationship check, how am I with myself now compared to how I was at the beginning of this? And how am I with you? my partner Mm. now Mm. compared to how I was with you at the beginning of this session. And I haven't had 
an interactive focusing session, even with a complete stranger, where there was not a very meaningful transformation from the beginning of the session to the end of the session. And at the same time, I haven't had a relationship check with a long-term partner that wasn't deeply meaningful from the beginning of the session to the end. You might think, geez, I've known this person for a couple of years. What could possibly be new and different from the beginning of this hour to the end of this hour? But the revelations that come Mm -hmm. and the support that comes in a focusing session, and I'm going to broaden this to say any focusing session, really. Mm Mm-hmm but especially in an interactive one are so meaningful and so deep and so beneficial that taking that couple of minutes to say to yourself and to say out loud, you do say it out loud. How has this changed me basically Mm -hmm. towards myself and towards you is just, it's magic. Yeah. I'm already experiencing that kind of shift in our conversation since we began speaking. And some of the the thing that comes for me as as you were saying that was this um I I guess the word honoring is going to be a sort of a theme, but what's happening there as as I'm experiencing it, as you describe it, for me, is this honoring the carrying forward nature of focusing. And that is to say, in this process that we began an hour ago, half an hour ago, however much time has passed, I am different my essence, my life energy as I carry forward from this moment now, as I, as I can reflect on both, is changed. That's powerful. Now, if this were an interactive focusing session and I were going to try to capture the essence of how it is for you inside of me and express it, what I might say is when you started out in this conversation, you were very bright, like a light bulb, maybe even a hundred watt light bulb. And then you went through this session and now you are a torch with a living flame that is moving and shifting with new understandings and new energy. And maybe you'll take that inside and see how that fits. Yeah, and as I do take that in, um, the experiences or the words that come, like the billboard that sort of comes, the whole body experience is just the words so alive Mm. so alive so alive Mm -hmm. there you go now David there's one important thing about interactive focusing that I haven't mentioned in the course of this conversation should I mention it now Yes. Okay. It has to do with the taking of turns. And the minute I say it, I think it's going to be obvious, but it needs to be said. In many focusing partnerships, um, people pay attention to who the first focuser is. I've had partnerships where my partner was very attentive to that. They wanted it to be alternating turns. So this week I'm focuser first, next week they're focuser first. Mm -hmm. Um, When that happens, you know, I attend to it with them because it's important to one or both of us. Other partnerships I've had, nobody can remember and nobody cares. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) We go with who has the felt sense of something immediate or we just... You know, I've never flipped a coin, but it kind of is a 
mental coin flipping. Mm -hmm. In interactive focusing, the very nature of it is such that the second focuser's session is meant to be informed by the first focuser session. It doesn't have to be, but it is allowed to be. It can be, and it often is. Mm. My mm. understanding isn't well informed. I don't have any facts to back this up, but my understanding is that this is a controversial thing in our focusing community. Not everybody believes that this should be a focusing form. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's many, many people who do believe it should be a focusing form. And my guess is that this thing that we're talking about right now may have a lot to do with that. The way that works is if you are the first focuser and your topic is, let's say, uh, a relationship with a relative that is causing you some difficulty, mm -hmm. I am in partnership with you and I may take that topic in and I may find that there's something I want to focus on about a relationship with a relative that is difficult for me. Mm -hmm. And that's perfectly fine. In fact, it's encouraged. And mm -hmm. that is why this form has more than potential. I mean, I think it is working in this way now. I know it is for me to help and support people who are in difficult relationships or even in conflict. Mm -hmm. And I have at least one instance in my experience where I used this when I was in conflict with someone and it helped us resolve the conflict. Mm. So I wanted to bring, it's actually two things I brought. One is the notion of allowing the focuser to influence the second focuser's content. Mm -hmm. And second is the possibilities that this has for direct application to conflict situations between two people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As you describe that, I can understand the point of view uh, from the community where that um, that kind of exchange could seem take take or impede part of the egalitarian nature of a of a partnership. On the other hand, if we are talking about carrying forward energy and and uh, then you know I think if you're if you're not um, active or if you're not affected. Uh, or if if you're sublimating things that are happening within you, um, or close to it, like I'm not saying that every interactive focusing session would result in, uh, and I'm sure this is your experience. I'm not sure, but it may be. Not every single one results in you if you are the second person to focus uh, your session being about uh, content from from the previous focuser's session but there's there's the space for that so there's something I'm really appreciating about the space that this type of focusing uh, because it's acknowledging that you as a, as a human being are in that process as well mm-hmm yeah, that's a really good statement of the issue, and I took it in, and since we're in conversation and not in a focusing session, I'm going to respond <laughs> Yeah. instead of reflecting. Um, the thing I want to say about focusing turns and the influence is what I heard you say is that it, it's possible in a regular traditional focusing session for me, the listener, to be influenced strongly by what I hear from the focuser. And we have a careful way of handling that, that I could focus on that topic as long as I don't 
step on your content by doing it. I know that in my own practice, if that happens to me in a traditional focusing session, if they're talking about a, a hot button of mine and I decide I would like to focus on that, I will say to my partner before I start focusing, you know, this is something that came up for me because of listening to you. If it's okay with you, I would like to use the general topic. Of course, I will respect and stay away from your content. And I've never had a partner turn me down on that. Mm-hmm. In an interactive session, I'm noticing something forming newly in me from this conversation. Because we're not saying that you're forced to do that. I haven't encountered that in any of my learning or practicing of interactive focusing. It's not that you must Mm -hmm. take from what you heard from the first focuser. It most importantly, it's that you can, because that's how you're going to build a relationship. It's also important that you mind the notion of alternating terms, because you can see where if Focuser number one is always the first focuser. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Focuser number two is always going to be riffing on their content, as it were. Or or maybe leaves themselves open in that space to someone else's content prior to them addressing whatever might be there for them at at the beginning. Mm. Um, So... uh, what I like about, or what I love about what you're saying, is that the the idea that it the who goes first has to be traded equally and has to be tracked in interactive focusing inserts a kind of egalitarianism that r- respects the process so much that it's acknowledging that something could come up for somebody during the listening, while they're listening, and that that um, is not going to be imposed on them consistently, but that it's going to be a shared thing. So each, like, if you and I engage in that kind of partnership, we know that that, that this that if it's my turn to listen first, I might be affected. When it's your turn to listen first, you might be affected by my session. But when that's sort of laid out, then I don't see... uh, I'm sure people listening might have a lot of different thoughts and opinions on this. But as as I... And I'd have to sit with it longer. But as, as I sense within me right now... That if those if that is laid out between you and I in our partnership, then um, and it's treated, you know, respectfully and taught properly, then I don't I don't see uh, I I I could see it as in my own style of focusing as something that could create large openings. Yes, that sounds right to me. Yeah. That sounds true. <laughs> Yeah. Um, in, in my experience, and you know, my background not being therapy and not being um, some of the gentler professions, <laughs> I come from the business world and, and a lot more black and white sort of thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's always this um, risk of making it sound too much like a rule. I know that in my practice of interactive focusing, in my partnership, we don't actually write down who goes first each time. We, one, one of us does uh, often write it down, but we don't always write it down. So there is room there. If one of us comes to the partnership session with something really urgent, really difficult, really important, you know, in the, in the sense of, I mean, one of us has had a relative die in the course of our partnership. Yeah. That person goes first. (laughs) Sure. That that person goes whatever they want to. That goes Uh, back to our, our, the thing about acknowledging that you're in front of a human being and we're, we're going to be at different, different situations all the time. So what it comes down to is you've always got that person in front of you. And obviously 
we're going to be at different moments in our life. And sometimes those moments are going to be more challenging. And part of the partnership is understanding that if I'm not having uh, a particularly challenging day and my partner is facing a grief situation or family emergency, that, you know, we don't need to be so rigid that we have to stay inside the, the parameter of like, uh, you know, well, it's my turn to go first. That's exactly right. It's yeah. interesting that you used the word rigid because I'm thinking about, in, in my experience uh, over 10 years, learning and practicing, focusing, I have encountered the right amount of rigidity, too much rigidity, the right amount of flexibility, and too much flexibility. <laughs> so I think it's good to acknowledge here yeah. that these are things about which to be mindful. To You really put it beautifully to keep in front of me that this is a human being I'm exchanging with. Mm -hmm. A human being with all the same you know, uh, variety of stuff that I have and egalitarianism and underpinning all of that respect that this is a sharing relationship not any kind of one-way street in either direction. Um, that brings up for me this kind of, for me it's the ultimate application of interactive focusing, but even that's not quite the right word. In my lifetime, conflict in relationship has been the most challenging and the most unsuccessful area I have in human interaction. And I mentioned earlier, I had this opportunity to apply a slight variation of interactive focusing that brings into crystal clarity what we're talking about, where each person in the variation on interactive focusing was only allowed by mutual decision one sentence in their turn. Wow. We did that because to have to listen for either one of us to a 15 minute turn from one or the other of the aggrieved parties was too much accusation and anger, finger pointing, blaming, drama, call it anything you want, than either of us could stand. Mm -hmm. And so we agreed to try this form and it worked. A conflict that had shut the relationship down was eventually resolved to where we had a much better understanding of each other's essence, if you will. <laughs> Stay tuned for part two of our podcast with Barbara Dickinson and our focusing-oriented conversation about interactive focusing. You've been listening to The Focusing Way podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher. I'm your host, David Battistella. Please visit our website at thefocusingway.com.